All right, everyone ready to get this started? Good work. So I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Wade Bosley. Um, uh, tell you a little bit about my history. Uh, I like the earliest childhood memories I have is gathering buckets in Vermont with my grandfather. Um, so sugaring, I've been doing it my whole life. Uh, got out of high school and I went to work. Didn't go to college, uh, but I've been working in the trades for my whole life. Um, and five years ago, started at Proctor as a maple uh, service, or no, uh, maple maintenance technician. So that basically was uh, keeping all the equipment running and installing the tubing systems. Uh, so how it works at Proctor is every experiment starts off small. Every idea starts off small. So we have a lot of area where we can test uh, trees in groups of like nine or 12 or 15. So that's a small, that's small amount of uh, trees to deal with. But then once we get some information on that, we'll move to a larger section, 60, 80, 90. 100 trees and we'll collect all the data on that and then some of those don't make it past that stage. Some of those experiments we just stop because we got the information we need. Um, after that we have three other sections, 1200 taps, 1200 taps and another 2500 taps that we can calculate all the sap collected in those three areas. Those three areas are broken down into like 90 tree groups so out of 1200 trees uh, every 90 tree has uh, its own main line, so we can we can separate everything. And in the the bigger operate bigger experiments, we'll uh, do it for like three years, and we'll we'll switch the lines around so nothing is always the same. <coughs> and uh, for the last five years, the the large uh, experiments uh, I've done. I've installed because at Proctor we want one person doing these experiments so we don't have a variation of tapping differences and techniques. So everything that I'm about to show you, I've been a part of, I've done, this is the, I've installed, collected the data, turned it all into syrup and uh, yeah, a little bit of background there. Uh, we have some, that's not gonna work. <laughs> Last five years I've been talking to trees <laughs> it's my second time talking to people. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start off with shaking and not being able to use a laser pointer for a little bit. Once I get into it, I'll calm down a little bit. Um. <laughs> All right, so we have some uh, online resources that everyone is available to everyone. We have the, a copy of this on the table. Feel free to grab that on your way out. Um, include, you know, some from Proctor, some from. Uh, uh, yeah, North American Maple Trigger and Extension. Um, I was supposed to say that. Uh, <laughs> so we're here to maximize sap yield and sustainability. Um, big part of it is getting the most sap for the, the least amount of damage to the trees. So, I mean, everyone wants the trees to last for as long as possible. Everyone wants to get as much sap as they can, but there's a, there's a graph that where they cross, you know, you, and it's all the old ways of doing things are starting to get phased out and we're finding out new techniques to uh, maximize sap yield and profit and health of the trees. Um, the errors that we've made in the past we're trying to get everyone to change their habits a little. So some of the old practices, uh, one thing I want to show is this thing work. See the size of this tree? Uh -huh. I think I think it may end over like here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, uh, That'll come into play later in this discussion, but uh, that's 60, 70, that, that's huge. You know, um, so folk wisdom, uh, always tapping on the south or the west side of the trees. We're gonna go over most all of these 
in the pre presentation, there's a couple of them that were that we don't don't uh, make mention of. I always have over a large root or under a large branch. We don't have any. I don't have any data for that, but tapping underneath a branch, the the grain patterns and the the straws or the the columns of the tree are a lot tighter. You don't get it. You get less sap if you tap under a branch. I think where that might stem from is when you look up a tree and there's half of it goes up and some of it's dead over here. The other side's pretty good. Tap under that because that's where it's getting all its energy from. Um, but if you got a branch, don't tap underneath it. Um, uh, tapping low on the trunk, better yield. Uh, bigger spouts produce more sap. Drill tap holes straight to avoid oval tap holes. Three inches, tap hole three inch deep gives you more than two inch. Um, second tap, twice the sap. We're going to go over all these. Uh, seeding the spouts deeply. Tapping is easy. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, so another part of my history that I didn't mention, uh, I've been a part of our family's sugar and operation for the last 20 plus years where I've had to like rely on the revenue generated from that. So, uh, and that's, I'm going to refer to it as uh, the property is on, it's called Maycumber Mountain. So if I bring up Maycumber Mountain, that's our, my family sugar bush, Proctor. So I work at Proctor. And yeah, so there's those two things. I can see Maycumber from Proctor, so it's kind of convenient. Don't have a tapping party. Uh, don't invite people that don't know what they're doing. It's just, it, it turns out terrible. Um, vacuum causes more internal tree damage and produces less sweet sap and flavor. There's no evidence that says that the vacuum does that. This is, this is bad. <laughs> uh, really, really bad. Um, many things going wrong here. The drop length. You've minimized your, your uh, tapping zone by not, this 12 inch, 14 inch drop length, you can't get anywhere on the tree. Um, tapping b directly below, next to, all, all of these things are just bad. And four taps on one tree, especially under vacuum, it's not a good idea. This was, this was a producer that would only tap on the south side of a tree. That's what happened, that's what it looked like when we cut the tree down. So, you got one side of the tree, I mean, it, they had tapped over here some, but just completely destroyed this. This is, all this wood, all this brown staining is non-conductive wood. It will not transfer sap flow at all. There's nothing going on there except badness and dead stuff. Okay, so we, we put a tree on a lathe. Um, so every time you tap, you create a wound, and when you're tapping, this is, if you can think about this picture while you're tapping and just imagine or visualize what is going on inside that tree. This brown stuff here, non-conductive. No sap, you will get no sap there. It, I, we've purposely drilled into this stuff and got the re results from it. I said you won't get any sap, you will get some but not anywhere near what you should. You, the main objective is to avoid that area. Um, so that staining area, it's kind of like a, like a scab on a human. It's just, it's, it's scar tissue. It's just no longer works well for the tree. The bigger the drill bit you use and the deeper you drill, the larger that staining column is going to be. And we've, I've personally cut down hundreds of trees on purpose and slabbed them and turned them into cookies to, to get this information. And it, it, it sometimes feel horrible about it, but we do have some producers that allow, that are going to go thin their woods and let us go in and take these trees. And it's awesome that they do that. Uh, it, it's, it, we get a lot of good information from that. We do it at Proctor as well, but we only have so many trees just like everyone else. So that wounding 
usually always goes up and down, but trees are weird. We, we've dissected them and they go sideways and crooked and any which way you can imagine. You can kind of tell by looking at the bark from an old tap hole. If, it, if you look at the bark or have ever split a lot of firewood, you can kind of tell if it's going to waver way off or not. If, you, if that comes in your mind, <coughs> stay away further. Tap further away from the normal area that you would. The more you tap, the uh, more uh, non-conductive wood you're going to have. And yeah. This whole discussion is about this right here. Okay, so the tapping band, that's the area that the drop can reach. Um, so by the drop, I mean from the spout to the lateral line, the piece of tubing in between, you can refer to as the drop. You want to be able to reach all the way around the tree if you can. Um, if you're going to use two taps because of a large tree, you still want a long drop. Um, so it says adjust downward for when you're doing the tapping. The, la uh, the last talk I did the other week at the end I had someone come up to me and be like, so are you saying tap below the lateral? And, and my answer is yes. So the tapping zone, the tapping band is here to here. The research that we have done is telling us that Coming from gravity, gravity says bucket trigger bush to gravity with no vacuum pump to where we are now, and this is that Maycumber, we always would make sure that our drop line was headed downhill. Then we got vacuum, and then we continued to make sure that the drop line was going downhill because when the power went out or the generator ran out of gas. Um, you got good vacuum, this is fine. The research that we did on b tapping below the lateral, we went around on the large scale experiment, just like that, straight down. We came up with no difference. The, 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 after that study was done, we did find out that we got a little bit better by running the lateral when we're going way below the lateral. If you turn it into a J, it uh, creates <coughs> less downward hydraulic pressure when uh, you have a free slaw. So tapping underneath the lateral like that is, is not going to lose you any sap under good vacuum. Um, we have the numbers for all this. Uh, but that being said, it opens up a wide range of area. I mean, you can do all of this. Your vacuum will suck it up. So at any point, if anyone has any questions, yeah. Uh, my question is, the last seminars I've gone to, mm -hmm. one of the things they stated about going below the laterals mm -hmm. was that you'd get a freezing issue and it could actually push the taps back out. Yep. Did you see that in any of your... This way, yes. But if you go this to way, J? No. Really? It's the, the hydraulic pressure that's created from going straight down under a free saw. With that small amount of hook in there, uh, the gases or the air will... There's usually a break of, yep. uh, it's not a solid column of fluid all the way through. That's the key to that. <coughs> but yeah, so questions? Yeah, raise your hand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is a check valve spout. Um, everyone has their own preferences on spouts, and I am not a salesman by any means. Um, Research has shown us that you can gen get more sap with a CV spout. Don't care what anyone, anyone does on that. If you find yourself doing this more than 10% of the time, you want to buy a bag of these for when you go below the lateral. This is where the CV2 spout will outperform any other one on the market, like this. It's up for discussion everywhere else. <laughs> Black ones, clear ones. White and pink, that's, that's personal preference and location and the season.
But yeah, check valves, if you're gonna do a lot of under the lateral like this, it is the way to go. Where <coughs> all the seminars, again, you can't do whatever, is avoid th this loop. Okay. Avoid that. So you're saying it doesn't matter? I am I am saying that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, uh because uh, I will twist mine so that I don't have this. Yep. Three. Our luck, you can twist them so that they will spiral down. Yep. There's always that you can low. We did this for three years on twelve hundred trees. So okay. so like three hundred trees, we'd make sure they were like upwards. Yeah. Three hundred trees we did like this. Yeah. Three hundred trees still we okay. did like that. Yeah, those that's terrible. And then <laughs> three hundred trees we did like this. And that's even worse. And we didn't <laughs> see any difference in no, the no sapiens. Three different years, three three different what setups. Was, what was your vacuum like? Like 26, 27, something like that? Never under 25. Never under 25. Yep. Okay. Yep. So it should work with 316s if you've got a good vacuum. Yes. It works with 316s as well. Yeah, yep. Can you repeat that? 316 it, as well? It, it, he asked if it works on 316s, and it does. Um, as far as I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I apply that practice. Uh, I have applied this method on 316th and haven't visually seen any difference, but we never did the actual study with 316th, but I've, I've done it. So, so do you know what the cutoff <clears throat> low point of the vacuum is that that will work well? Speculation is 23. Okay. So. We, uh, in the earlier rounds of testing, before it moved into the big experiment, at 23, it didn't seem to work as well, like that. So, get, get above 23, 25 better. Uh, you're talking vacuum at the tap hole, or pretty close, or within a couple feet of it? Um, this was at the end of the line. So uh, at Proctor, we're using smart check sensors, so they all tell us the vacuum at the end of each line. All right. The critical part of your whole season is two or three seconds at a time. That tap hole is important, critical, uh, big influence on the outcome of yield. Um, understanding <coughs> these decisions is going to help with the short term and your, um, your yield and going to help with the sustainability of your forest and your net profit. Uh, this, all these, all this was, all the studies were done in uh, a normal sugar bush, nothing, uh, no major wetlands or any declining forest or anything, it's all just healthy forest uh, organic standards. Um, it's, uh, it's not based upon science. So the size tree that you decide to tap is one thing. I've seen what tapping a eight or nine inch tree turns into after 20 years. I don't like it. Um, being conservative is better for su sustainability, but that's everyone's decision. What works for you? Uh, at Maycumber, 12, no smaller than 12 inch, and uh, never two tap. N no, we have no trees that we tap with two, two uh, uh, drop lights, um, just for the sustainability. What about a 60 inch tree? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> huh? We don't have any. We got. <laughs> we have. We have. Uh, we, at, at Proctor, we have some that are 40 plus, and we do tap them twice. Uh, and a lot of times, it's you try to get low and high. And we have some slides uh, on that information here. Oh, sorry, um, that last one was uh, drop line length. So, the, what length to get your drop line? Yep. So, in the past, uh, drop lines, people are. Um, old practice or current practice is a 24 inch drop line length. Um, we're suggesting 36 inches because it increases 
your chance of not hitting non-conductive wood in the tree over a 25, 25 year period. This green line that runs down is a 36 inch drop. This is, this is basic uh, math, uh, not basic, but it's, it's straight up math uh, on the area that you can cover with a 36 inch drop compared to a 24 inch drop. Um, green line, after 25 years, your chances of hitting stained of good wood is still at like 94% by using a longer drop. So the shorter the drop you use, the less area you can cover, the more chances you're going to run into stained wood, non-conductive wood. Has everyone tapped a tree here? Or, uh, don't use standard bits. Uh, they, they, they don't f remove the chips from the tree well. Uh, using a maple tapping bit is highly preferred uh, because of the point. It's easier to locate where you want to start the drill. <coughs> Pulls the wood chips out better. Standard bits, will, they'll smoke and burn and uh, they don't extract the wood chips so you do not get as clean of a tap hole. This here is a picture of a tap hole with a dull drill bit. So this top, this top line here, all the jagged edges. That's like, so in, inside the tree, you had like a series of straws. If you, take, if you were to take a handful of straws, put it on the table and took a like razor sharp meat cleaver and chopped it, you'd be able to get a clean cut and you'd be able to flow water through it well. If you took a hatchet and smashed it and like ripped it and teared it and pulled it, it'd have a bunch of jagged edges. That reduces the flow rate of the sap through those straws or water through the straws sap. And it's also an area for uh, microbes to establish growth which, which can uh, change the, your flavor, color of your syrup and shorten your season. Um, sharp, yeah, sharp drill bit. Usually you get about 2,500 taps per bit. A lot of times you don't know you're getting dull until you put in a new one and then you, you realize. Um, don't, don't put them in your toolbox and let them roll around in your dashboard. Um, what do you do with the old ones? I, I, I get rid of them. So I don't go, so when, when I'm down, when I break my last bit or so I lose one, I can't go back and find another one that's already dull. I get rid of it. I, I know I'm, in the past we were like, hey, we'll put it in the wood shop here and there and you know, next thing you know, rummaging through the drill bit drawer looking for another one instead of, instead of buying enough at the beginning of the season. Um, Is there any uh, that you've seen, say the difference between the bit doing 2,500 and 5,000? No, I have not. Because uh, that's what somebody recommended to me was don't go over 5,000. Yep. Um, I do not know that. I haven't gone past 2,500. Uh, <clears throat> uh, at Proctor, when we have the big areas, 1,200, 1,200, and 2,500, that's three drill bits. So it's all done the same. So I never really get to the 5,000 mark with one bit. So to keep the research all the same, yeah, keep it sharp and keep it new. Um, the size drill bit to use in the, the spout that you're gonna choose. Um, in the past, 17, six, seven, seven sixteenths spouts were pretty common. They made an awful hole. Um, if anyone's use those in their sugar woods, you can really tell the damage that it does just by looking at the tree. Um, so there's just, by dropping 1 16th of an inch to 5 16th spout, you're, you're, you decrease in sap yield slightly. So it's, yeah, modest sap yield loss from 7 16th to 5 16th. Um, 10 to 11% reduction when you go 5 16th to quarter inch. So that that's, pretty significant. Uh, most, if you're worried about your trees and want to maintain the health better and you want to sacrifice sap for the health of the trees, 
you can go quarter inch, but it's the evidence that we're seeing is five sixteenths is the right choice for maximum yield versus the damage to the tree. Um, Center Acer did the same study in metric basically, but so it's just following the same trend. Um, they did in between a quarter inch and five sixteenths. So all, it's basically telling us from five sixteenths down to five thirty <coughs> seconds, there is a loss in sap yield. Um, <laughs> five thirty seconds and three sixteenths, finding those old tap holes is really challenging. And it's, it's, it's not fun. It, you spend a lot of time trying to avoid stained wood when you're using these spouts. <coughs> So most sites with reasonable tree growth rates can support the use of 516 spout. Um, <clears throat> how deep to tap? Um, so this chart is, is syrup yield. So in the bottom is how deep the hole is. So at inch and a half, if you get 100% of sap, at uh, inch and three quarter, you get 25% more two inches around the same. After two inches, as you continue to go deeper and deeper, you do not get more sap. All you do is damage the tree more. That's, that's all it's doing. Drilling trees at two and a half inches also breaks drill bits really easy. It's <coughs> quite challenging to, uh, to do, consistently do inch, two and a half inches deep. This is, yeah. To slant or not to slant. Um, in the past, the gravity buckets, uh, you know, all this there was, it was recommended to go in at a slant to keep the spout from popping out and frost heaving out. With the newer taps and uh, 5 sixteenths, um, straight in, straight out is, seems to be the way to go. Um, So when, when you're going in, drilling into the tree and you cr pull out, wobble your <laughs> drill, the drill wobbles a little bit, it's, you're going to have to pound that spout in a little bit further to keep it from leaking. So going straight in, straight out, clean hole is the key to not creating micro leaks. Okay. So drilling at a slant, you are not creating an oval tap hole. A, a round bit will not make an oval tap hole. Whether you're going at a slant or straight, when you force a drill in too hard on going in, and you, you have to put slight pressure on it, you know this, but too much pressure, your drill will wobble. That creates an oval tap hole, whether you're slanted or straight. When you pull out, if you're over your head, pulling out, it creates an oval, oval tap hole most always. Proper technique is key. There is currently no scientific evidence either way on sap yield. Most likely no difference. I'll let you know about that. Because that is up for discussion. So that's, we're starting with that on a small scale now. Yes? When tapping, you know, if you actually hit a dead wood mm -hmm. and then you find good wood, and it's within what distance? Should you be concerned with sucking vacuum or sucking the air through that spot where you tapped in? Because you had some good wood, and right at the end, you hit a little bit of dead wood. Should, should you plug that off? You, <clears throat> you should absolutely worry about it. You should? Oh, yeah. Um, if you choose to put in another tap hole, you're going to want to get as far away from that first one as you can. Or put your tap in that hole and take the loss. Um, uh, or cut your spout off and plug the drop and wait till next year and... Right, that's what, I, that's yeah. what I've been doing. Um, I'll either tap it and put a plug on the end. Yeah. Or you can find out the ends that you can curl around yep. the 5 sixteenths. You can just tap one of those in yep. nice and easy and it seems yep. to plug it off pretty yep. good. Um, it is a concern though. Good. Yes, it is a concern. Uh, we have a chart on... <coughs> there's... We'll get to a little bit more of that in, in a little bit. Um, how close to an old tap hole should you drill? We're thinking two inches over and six inches up or down is minimum. <coughs> High vacuum, 
you might need more space, especially if it's a last year's hole. And when you when when I approach a tree, I've already I ran through a series of stuff as I'm approaching the tree, and I'm finding the the old tap hole. And on that old tap hole, I'm looking for that tap hole like that. It's like the curtains are closing. There's like the, the tree starts to heal, and there should be some curtain action going on, like if it's starting to shut off. If that's not happening, if it's still just a round hole and not healing, that tells me go further away because you, I've seen it, you at 25 inches of vacuum plus 10 inches away, you, you can suck out that hole if it's not completely compartmentalized. It's probably the last time I'm going to say that word. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the the staining column sap does not flow in that column. You need to avoid it. Um, not always straight. So tapping a tree. So finish tapping one tree before you go to the next tree. On your approach to your next tree, that's a real good time to look at examine the tree. Not, it's, the best time is not when you get to the tree and do this. <laughs> now, I mean, my job is in the forestry industry and I do enough of this straight up looking. <laughs> Examining it prior to getting right underneath it, it should be just common habit, you know, as you're approaching it, check it out, you know, and if you do it for long enough, you're going to know this tree, you know, you're going to recognize it and certain things it's doing. I like to tap in a pattern. And that's my colleagues and I are in different areas on this. On my approach to the tree, I can already see where I'm heading. In the last four years, I started here and I'm working my way down and around the tree. So on my approach, I'm not. I don't get to the tree and be like, "Where is there, what's going on here?" Before I'm get there, I'm already like, "Okay, I know you're going to be over here somewhere." You know, um, say it saves time. And it's easier to see <coughs> those curtains closing on the old stain, on the old tap holes. You can examine the you know, your previous years easily with one look right down through. And, may, and if you're seeing a trend of like the last two years not healing, you may want to do that <laughs> again and re-examine what's going on and make sure that you're in the good part of the tree that will heal and will generate um, the maximum sap yield. You need to find where the old tap holes are. This is why I tap in a pattern. Um, make sure that the drop line can reach to where you're drilling to. Uh, it's also handy. My drill. I, once you find where you want to drill, I don't take my eyes off from that spot. My drill's always in the same spot, like the shifter in a vehicle. Don't have to look for it. It's right there. I can pull it up, keep my eyes on the hole until the bit's there. Then it's time to drill. Um, Two hands. Do I drill with two hands all the time? No. I really, really, really try. Um, and sometimes two hands is, you know, leaning and one hand's on the tree, the other one's on the drill. I've, I've drilled a lot of holes and chunks of wood standing up <laughs> and seen the difference of how I drill here with one hand compared to two hands here. And <clears throat> using not just your, your wrist and your elbow to do it, um, it, using your whole body, the weight of your body. In is usually easy with the right amount of pressure. Pulling out, that's where, for me, a lot of the problem comes from. If you, if you, when you're, after you're <coughs> done tapping the tree, if you see chips of wood on the high side, the low side, that are still on the tree, that means you wobbled your drill. Mm -hmm. If you put, if you drill it correctly, you should be able to go straight in, straight out, perfectly clean. It shouldn't be any hangers on the side. That's ovalizing the hole. That makes you put your spouts in deeper and it m creates leaks and reduces your sap yield. Wayne, do you get concerned at all about um, any um, bits of, um, from the drill staying in the hole? Do you get concerned about that? From staying in the hole? Yes, those need if there if there is any in there, they need to come out 
And the I recommend, I usually keep a branch or a clipped off um, bag tie somewhere. So if it, there is chips of wood in there, I will stick, it's usually a beech, a part of a beech tree, uh, and extract it by hand, um, especially on 316s. That, that is a big nemesis for 316s. Yeah, that hole should be clean, but if you're using your body in and out, it's, it, you can do it. The, no, okay, so 80% of pro Proctor, elevation in the terrain is like this, okay? That's 80% of the land, southwest facing slope. Perfect for sugaring. Make umber, 80% of it's like this. Yeah. <laughs> Tapping like this yeah. while climbing and getting to everywhere, it creates tennis elbow. Well, I call it chainsaw elbow, but because I don't play tennis, but <laughs> you get sore, you know. And if you can, you, if you're doing five, six, ten thousand taps in a season, and you do this, because the tapping band is larger, because you can tap below the lateral and open up all this area, it's so much. You got a lot more longevity to to uh, continue tapping. Um, one single motion in out. Do you use a drill stop of any sort? We usually use a piece of tubing. Um, that's that's the the preferred method at Proctor. Um, so we we'll measure the drill bit, cut the tubing to the selected size, jam it on the onto the drill, uh, onto the drill bit, and I ch check it periodically. Um, at the a little bit different there because the amount of main line that we have. So every every time I go up the line, 90 taps, when I get to the end, I have to write down the information, how many taps are there. If I hit stained wood, any other notes, I'll remeasure that. every at the, When I pull my notebook out and stop for a second, that's one of the things that you're going to want to keep track of because if you let that drill bit uh, spin too much in there or been going too aggressively, that piece of tubing will shrink. Yes? What are you guys tapping on? What depth? Two inches. Two inches. Yep. Yes. Uh, Abby won't be happy with you. What's that? Abby won't be happy with you. Uh, Abby's always happy with me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Where's your uh, precision tapper? I don't see. Because <coughs> that is uh, uh, that's up for discussion. That's uh, that's research to come at another date. What do you personally feel about the precision tapper? Personally, um, I w would like to prove that I can get more sap yield with that drill than a precision tapper. Um, so, yeah, that's coming down the road. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 uh, my personal opinion on the precision tapper is the, the mechanical advantage that you've gained from it being spring-loaded and pulling back is awesome, but you've lost it with the amount of leverage you've created because they're so long. So mechanical advantage of the in and out is good. The uh, the length of it, you can really screw up. I don't think the the Accu Tapper is for beginners. I've also, so I did thousands of taps with the Accu Tapper, and towards the end, I didn't notice it until it was dark and I was still tapping with the light on it. When there, there's several times with the Accu Tapper, when you drill in, that drill bit goes boom. You'll, you'll start. You'll start in one spot. If you're not perfectly flat on that, that drill bit's not perfectly flat on the tree. There's a piece of bark that's pushed out a little bit. If it hits that, it goes burnt. Oh. Um, never noticed it until it was dark, and I was like looking right under it. And so, we're gonna we're gonna put that to the test. <coughs> okay, so this is what not to do. Um, One-handed over your head. It, you, it's really, really hard to get a clean tap hole that way. Mittens are tricky. That's personal preference. Um, that's, you know, this is where some of the problem comes to, or comes from. Um, with the tapping band that we now know of under high vacuum, here to here, there's no reason for that. That's it, no reason for consecutively doing that. You may have trees where you you know you need to go somewhere elsewhere just because <coughs> of 
big large scar or stuff happens. All right, how far to tap the spout in. When you're drilling here and you make that perfect hole with no shavings on the side, it's not ovalized, you tap that spout in, you, when, you're, when the sound changes and your hammer pops off, stop if you've made the proper hole. And this is with all the spouts that we've tried. If the hole is round, you do not need to give it that extra hit that we used to occasionally. It's as soon as your hammer bounces off and you hear that sound change, stop right there. Change in pitch. <clears throat> All right, lighting, lighter tapping hammers. There's a lot of them out there. Um, Do you find it's a big difference between the tapping hammers and the regular hammers? <laughs> so, uh, my dad was a building contractor. I've had a S wing. I had a hand me down S wing when I was eight or ten years old. I can I tap accurately with that hammer? Yes, I can. I know I can. I've done it. Proctor, make cumber. I don't want to carry the thing. So the uh, the one that uh, we've used the the plastic headed ones. Um, yeah, I, uh, right now, this season, I'm using uh, straight up uh, aluminum that I got at D and G, which I, it's one of the only ones that'll fit in a hammer holder. Huh. So I had I went around to all the dealerships with my hammer holder, <laughs> not the one I use, but uh, so I, I grab a hammer, drop it through, drop it through, and I, I eventually ended up at uh, D and G, and they had one that didn't fall through. So I'm trying that one this year. Seems to be working out well. <laughs> And it also has, on the back side of it, it also has a spout puller like a claw hammer. So, um, so far I'm a fan. Yes? Um, uh, some of the earlier trees, they were, they were young trees, smooth wood, two inches is two inches. This is getting a little closer to what we look at. Do, do you scrape that layer of bark off until you're looking at young wood? Nope. While tapping? Yeah. Nope, I do not. No, I, uh, I know there's tapping hammers out there that have the scraping edge on the back of them. I don't know why that's a good idea. Uh, I, I think that's the tree's skin. <laughs> I, I, that's my, my opinion. I, uh, I don't, you know, occasionally you'll get into a tree that has real scaly, leafy bark and you may have to tap a little piece off because you want to yeah. get into a good spot, but scraping the tree down, I don't, I don't have any idea why that's a good idea. I, so, there's a <clears throat> tapping in too far into the tree. So this is one of the <clears throat> experiments that we've done that we did on a medium scale and stopped. It didn't go to the large scale because of if we were to tap 1,200 trees like that and lost 42% of sap, we would not generate as much syrup and it's just not worth it. Um, my salary is majorly depending on syrup sales, so I'm a little invested on making syrup as well <laughs> as research, and I'll draw the line when it, we know that it's going to affect us. But you can see when you, when you properly put the spout in, there's a line. So the further you pound that spout in, the less sap you're going to get. So tapping, drilling that hole straight and true and tapping it in at the minimum amount where you will maintain vacuum is the key. So yeah, this uh, fully overdriven, half overdriven, and the right way. So uh, everyone's seen bark that's splitting, on, especially on uh, smooth bark stems, particularly red maples. Um, this is Tim Wilma uh, did this. That crack that you see does not go further than the bark. Does not go into any further than the cambium layer. We had to cut them down to figure this out and chop them up. But the the bunch of all the trees that we found this kind of cracking on did not show any evidence of that tree actually cracking. It's all super superficial. So the compartmentalization of that hole. <laughs> is the same whether that crack is there or not? Yes, from what I've seen.
ahead. What about tapping at really cold temperature? Really, really, like under 10 degrees with a large hammer and tapping in too far, you're, you're asking for trouble. But I do not know uh, at what temperature that, that happens at. It's, it's got to be really cold. But, I mean, I, I don't know anybody who likes tapping at <laughs> zero degrees. But, you know, 10 degrees, you know, if you're moving, it's okay. But, and I've done it a bunch and not had any cracking. Um, so you say you don't tap below 10 degrees? Yeah. Uh, he tried. I, I'm encouraged to not go work outside for more than two hours if it's below 10 degrees by university policy. <laughs> do, I, do I always do that? I, yes. <laughs> All of us. <laughs> Today's uh, presentation is being recorded. All right, so the effect of the tree size versus syrup yield, sap yield, syrup yield, syrup yield. Um, the bigger the tree, the more sap you're going to get from it. It's straight up. So we've, you know, we're, we've done this to four inch trees up to, you know, 25 plus inch trees. Um, tapping those small, we're not, yeah, okay. I'm not saying tap small trees, but we have to have the scientific evidence behind it to tell you to not tap small trees and what it does. Um, so every every inch in diameter of the tree it, uh, grows in, or uh, half pound per syrup per inch as the tree grows. So this is where I like the 12 inch tree. One of the one of the one of the Mark, the, what we're shooting for at Make Umber and Proctor is getting a uh, half pound per tap. Okay, so when, so that's approximately 20 plus gallons of sap at 2% ish. So if we want to get a half a gallon of syrup per tree per tap, we want to be above 12 inches diameter. Um, anything smaller than that. It's not getting our numbers to where we want to be. Um, last year we were at 0.68 gallons per tap, which, and uh, so uh, I have no use for damaging trees under 12 inches unless they tell me to. A lot of this does vary with uh, your vacuum level, sanitation practice, and the weather. Gravity, all right, so uh, back to the beginning, we were talking about one tap versus two tap. Gravity systems in the past, they collected their sap straight above the, the tap hole, down to the spout. Adding a second one, you could double the amount of sap that you get. So on this graph, it'll show, pay no attention to the trees that small. Um, on this graph, it shows that you basically get double the amount of sap under gravity by adding that second tap. So under vacuum, you're pulling from a larger area of the tree. So when I first started at Proctor, uh, Tim Wilmot was doing this experiment and I came across the trees that he was doing it to, they're, they're big trees, and there was nothing but wires from 20 feet up into the root down, just hundreds of them all throughout the trees, just uh, vacuum sensors, micro and wires and a battery and a data collector. And I, I, it, this is how we came up with this. <laughs> it's it, it's kind of... It's kind of nuts to see, but, uh, and that tree's still there doing fine. Um, when you add that second tap, you start fight, the vacuum starts fighting with each other. And this area here, you, you don't end up collecting that. That just pretty much stays going back and forth and wherever it needs to go. <clears throat> what this is showing right, right here is the blue line is one tap. The green line is adding a second tap under vacuum. So on like a 17 and a half inch tree, 17, 18 inch tree, you're getting um, 10 pounds of syrup per tap. When you add that second tap, you're getting 15 pounds, 50% more. The big tree at the beginning of the presentation, somewhere over here, 
right? You get above 30, 40 inches, you can get away with it in, in double, but uh, there's not a lot of those out there. And red maple, even, even less. Uh, a lot of people refer to red maple as soft maple. The, the straws that are in the tree are slightly larger. The vacuum pulls from a larger area. So red maples, if you're gonna put two taps in a tree, don't let it be a red maple. So, sorry, yep. so the second tap, you're getting 50% more sap? Second tap, you're getting 50% more instead of 100% more. So, so you're still gaining. Yeah, 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 So if I'm running my so plant, yeah. I'm going to put the second tap. That's, that's, it's entirely up to you. It's going to, it will decrease the sustainability of those trees. And down the road, it's going to be harder and harder to find the, the good wood. That is entirely up to you. Uh, personally, I'd rather get 100% every year than 100% plus a little bit more and have the tree live longer. It, that's all that's personal. When the smaller the tree gets, the more effect that double tap vacuum <coughs> happens. So I'm saying I've got it. Yeah. do it up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If you get if you get 30, 40 plus inches around, just make sure the opposite sides maybe a little bit up, a little bit down, and you, you should be fine. Um, tap hole height on sap yield. The, Tap hole height here versus here. We got we actually ended up there. The little sticks at the top are error bars, so there's a there's a little bit of room for error here. But we actually this one actually says we got more sap from tapping low, below the lateral with high vacuum. So what it really says is there's no significant significant difference whether you're here or here. <coughs> All right, north, south, east, west. Um, every year that we've done this, we've came up with something different. <laughs> south doesn't always win. You know, neither does west. Uh, this is one year where the you know uh, <coughs> east was the got the lowest amount of sap yield, but um, it's really not that much different with the error bars. I mean, with the error bars, if you average all this out, the line is pretty much right through here. Um, this is three other years of doing the study. Um, every, every year, every season is different. Um, you're better off what, tapping in a pattern like I do forces me to move around the tree. You know, I, a lot of times you get in a pattern of walking <laughs> up to the same tree that's hanging over a cliff, make cumber. Uh, and you can only get to one side, you know, and, but if you're tapping in that pattern and you stay and you know that you can go below, below the lateral with good vacuum, that opens up the other side that has never been tapped for the last hundred years. And now you're just going true instead of hanging. So tap all sides of the tree. <coughs> When's the best time to start tapping? Probably today. Last, last week was a good week. Uh, uh, <clears throat> from, from now on, mid-January, the, the more days that you wait to tap, the less sap you're going to get. Whether you're ready to collect it and process it, that's a whole, everyone's just, you know, that's up to each individual uh, producer. <clears throat> tap uh, spouts. There's There's so many out there. Um, this is it really, it's, it seems to be trending more towards personal preference and your location. Um, the, the black spouts and the darker colored spouts get warmer sooner with sunlight and the sap seems to flow sooner. And so if you're in a cold bush, eastern, north facing slope, where a black spout may be the way to go for you in certain years. White spouts on a, in, a, in a warmer environment maybe may prolong your season because the bacteria is not building up as quickly in the spout and in the lines and all the way down through. We, uh, it's personal preference and your location. And you, ha what, 
what we tell people, what I like to tell people is try one and keep trying them until you, you come up with the ones that you like. Stick with those because and usually what will happen is when you find one that you like, they stop making it. <laughs> so then you have to, that, that's, that's just, that's uh, as a sugar maker, just your own research on what works best for you. Um, we, so we did clear spouts, white spouts, black spouts, and, or two different kinds of black spouts. Um, I guess the, uh, the clear spouts over the four year study probably didn't do as well as the rest of them um, at Proctor. Um, and it's variable depending on the season. Each season, they all did something different. Um, it's all, you know, how warm it gets. Uh, Proctor prefers to use polycarbonates um, because if you have a micro leak in that um, tap hole, you can see it a little better by being able to see through the spout. And they seem to stick in the trees a little bit harder. They sometimes don't get as good of a yield as some of the others, but uh, that's what they've chosen to go with that. Sanitation. This is the last page of a whole nother book. So um, I'm not going to go into much detail on this one. Um, <clears throat> basically, if you, can, if you can afford to change your spouts every year, it's a good idea. Um, that's, a, that's a great sanitation practice. If you can afford to change your drops and your spouts every three years, three to five years, you're, you're, you're benefiting. Bleach works. I don't recommend using bleach. You have to use the right bleach for organic standards. And squirrels love it. And that it's, it, it, it's horrible. <laughs> it's no, no fun because we've, you know, we've already gone through and, you know, in the fall, beginning of winter, went through the whole sugar woods, replaced all the spouts, got all the lines up, and now we're going back through tapping. And the, the four bleach lines that we have out there are all chewed up. And it's just super frustrating, not worth it. Yes? So you mentioned affordability for a moment. So mm -hmm. some, some of us are just hobby yep. sugar makers and not commercial mm -hmm. guys with uh, this is a revenue generator. It's more of a, so for someone that has buckets and open spouts, mm -hmm. um, what are some of the things you recommend to keep that sanitary and good use of those to help keep your trees healthy? As far as like the spouts that you yeah. tap into collect with on a bucket? Yeah. Um, what are some tips about that kind of, if you're still using the old wood? Yeah, um, I, I can use help on this one. I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to give you the wrong ad advice on this. You can boil them. I would, I would, I mean, first thing, yeah, I first that. rule of cleaning and sugaring, hot, hot water. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that, but other, I don't really know, I don't want to mislead you on that one. But I would Don't say, be the first guy to tap. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, five minutes. No, I'm just talking about like as far as the same guidelines apply with actual the technique and yep. drilling all that. Yep. Absolutely. And all yep. that other stuff. That, yep. That's all kind of universal. But yep. I just didn't know if there's some other thing that maybe somebody in a small, smaller scale operation uh, would, would not have that information in front of them. Is all. I don't know the answer. <laughs> If you pour in buckets, don't try to tap too early, as somebody said. Uh, that's, you want to tap as close to when you think it's going to start yep. as you can without losing the first run. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's a big gamble. Yep. Yep. Thank you. What did yeah. you use to clean your line? <coughs> um, what, what we've found the last five years, what we've been doing is at the end of the season, taking the uh, spout out of the tree cutting the, the last year's spout off and plugging it on the tee and leaving the remaining sap that is inside the lines inside so it can do its own cleaning. Those sugars start chewing everything eventually. We do end up dumping a little on the ground at the, on the first run. Um, but that's the Oh yeah, it's wonderful stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, it does. Yep. Um, You're gonna vacuum while you're doing that? Um, while we were untapping, we, we've done it both ways, what, running vacuum and untapping and not running vacuum and untapping and not seeing any difference in that. So that's up to you. Um, it's cheaper to not run the vacuum. 
But uh, like I said, the, those, those sugars in there will start eating everything up um, throughout the summer. Um, what, one thing we haven't tried that we are going to is leaving the spout, the drops, open, open air. And hopefully the mud daubers and all the bugs and stuff don't get in them. That's the fear of that. But uh, we're, we're, we want to try that because we haven't tried that. Just leave, just taking them out of the tree, chopping the spout off and letting them dangle, see what that does. I don't see if there's any difference. Have you ever tried peroxide? Um, me personally, no. No, uh, I know people do. Um, uh, I'm assuming it's more expensive than bleach. And I'm not sure. Is it true that in Canada they use ethanol? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh wait, actually no. Uh, peroxide is on here. They, this, uh, there was peroxide done, and it did not seem to have uh, any good effect really for the cost. And uh, they also tried uh, alcohol and using Zapback spout adapter, which is a silver infused spout adapter that it stays clean that may that's good for some people they're a little more pricey like i said though this that was all that is all uh a whole nother chapter on sanitation there's a lot a lot of information there um so we're, we're anyone getting hungry okay so we're about to wrap things up here the, what we need to remember is to stay out of that staining column and if you have good vacuum don't worry as much as about where this drop line is going. If you are severely worried about going way under the lava, <coughs> just try it like that and see if it affects your yield. You know, and, and as, as, as you're doing it and your vacuum is high and you start running out of areas to go, give it a try. You can do this on, you know, four or five trees and observe them throughout the season, see, see what they look like, see the, see the flow. Um, we've, we've collected the sap, we've counted it, and uh, it's, there's no, no secret there, no. Yeah. All right, so that's, on the right you see, uh, that's non-conductive wood and uh, conductive wood. This is, uh, this is the when you run into non-conductive wood. So, if you don't hit, if you hit nothing but conductive wood, you have a chance of getting uh, five pounds per tap. The more, if you hit 25% of the stained wood, you're down to 3.5 pounds. You run into that real dirty stained wood. This is how much less yield you'll get when you're running into all the. Uh, Stained wood. I got one more graph. For it. We got it. This one. Okay. A little bit complicated. Uh, before 2017, Proctor Maple Research Center was hitting 4.5 percent of stained wood, which was losing us 70 cents per tap throughout the sugar woods. By adapting this practice below the lateral, we started. We were running into 1 percent stained wood, losing. 10 cents per tap. So by adapting our practices, we s saved ourselves over $3,000 of revenue by doing this. Big difference. Um, <laughs> exactly. Uh, this, this, uh, the, the dollar amounts do not include labor, maintenance, or uh, leak checking, that stuff. This is just the straight up numbers on the sap yield. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Any questions? Yeah. <laughs> anything below lateral, you, you are using check belt. Yes. No, okay. no in every case, uh, you're still. 
1,200 trees that are under research that require us to Thanks a lot. Not use the yes. Thank you. So that we're not using check holes on. And that's a 316 to 516 yeah. I've got everything 316, so yeah. I just kind of. Yeah. Um, Thanks. Um, if, if you're going to do a lot of under lateral, go with the CV. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Do you want to check valves on everything? Or just if you're below your lateral? Thank you. Good class. Thank you. Everything that we can. So we have one of the larger research areas that we have, 1200 trees. That area is going to be able to use a combination of that research. So everywhere that we can, they're using check valves. Go down. Trees here, run your lateral line down to another tree, and then make your thing jump up to the, to the conductor line. Um, that seems to work better than just pulling it evenly up. Clear or clear or install that. Keep in mind, we have a bucket here, but we have a You can go, instead of there, go down the hill and look up to where the entry point is lower. How are you? Today? How are you? Good. Good to see you. See you. Every now and then, I see you cross country skiing out in your meadow, out there below the house, or somewhere around. We've been making a lot of tracks out so there. Yeah, yeah. Our question is about when you have that uh, loop in the line below the line, the J, and the sap freezes in there. You do all the woods work, and then he um, basically. Yeah, you're losing sap that whole time. If it's so if you have a frozen column of sap in the it's going to be a little bit of it up here. Yeah. As well. But it doesn't yeah. seem to. Yeah. I mean, it's it seems like it not takes not longer to thaw down. To thaw down. Right. And then there, you're, you're there's set certainly up with less. There's certainly less. With a pump that pumps them back ice. up the hill to the yes. yes. up here. Right. Yes. Down here. Yeah. So the question is, does it take longer? And you ran everything up the ground. Yeah, you're losing some sap a little bit when the first time when you go into the wood, it first starts forming. It was more about getting out of the way of the meadow than it was so much about the data that we collected being above ground. It evens out. I wanted to keep my cows. But if your vacuum were to go less than 23, then you could run into problems. Yeah, then you're not going to be getting the sap when it's in that jet. And why? Because it's pulling it up. Okay. Timing was terrible. And it's good to know. It was great. Summer of 18 was dry. Yeah, yeah. And you leave the vacuum on <laughs> all the time? Oh, you did. Oh, you did. Oh, you did. At Maycumber, um, we, we will we'll, we'll go when it's appropriate. So that water if from, a from your five meadow goes down and up. feeds those bogs down below. Yeah, shut down. How that works? Yeah. yeah. Just, it, it, yeah. Cool. That's an, but <laughs> for being under research, we have there's a lot of water on the right. 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 So once yeah. those pumps start, you when it started yesterday, right. it's on from sea. Okay. <laughs> Boy, there's a lot wow. of water on the I have a question too. We've had somebody tap in that. Yeah. What kind of do so it? Uh, oh, it I mean, like she like doesn't care at all. Effort. 
What's yeah, happening? First time talking to JR about options. And I'm old yeah. school. We're I'm just like, want it. Across so is that house, is that a problem too? Like right something like this? Oh right. Yeah. And then we start worrying yeah. about. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. Up, 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 if you have good back. This is yeah. a problem. I wondered yeah. about that. I wondered yeah. if it was and then great. Down, and it's taken me yeah. years to believe. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, not there yet. So I, I, like I said, I've had me bushed and no no sugar house for years. No headaches. No. So you would have left. You would have left. Right. 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 And how big a point going back? Very, very, very exactly third line. The other thing about projects, just in case. Yeah, yeah. 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 all this yeah. research, yeah. I do it all the time. <laughs> oh, I'd be glad you One did person. That. Yeah. Yeah. So, but so that, but that's great all the way down through. So I was forced yeah. to do uh, right. this consistently. Right, you had to, yeah. And when this David put his, yeah. Yeah. Uh, reason I asked when David put his I collected all the sap in each 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 area. Yeah, every ninety trees had its own release. There were places where that. Was the case. Counts how many times it dumps. Edge. So I know exactly how much time came out of that ground, line. But right. So yeah, after the first year doing it, I'm like, and we had oh, hey, times this does work. Yeah, right. So <laughs> right. Maybe it was just that, maybe it was just right. the year of the season or the weather yeah. or the sensation or something. Once we get right. started, it's all right. I just didn't want to have to do it. Yes. The third year, I'm like, okay. Okay, yeah. yeah. After Saturday, you're a believer. I I have one other question, too. Sometimes I put the tap in sideways. Yep. You know, it because wasn't that much, but it was enough to create this yep. flow. Yeah. Absolutely. That, over does the that course matter winter, whether it's so, down you know. or or sideways. The only time that, that I don't think it matters <laughs> you know, not, is when you're down. <laughs> okay. You know, then, then you want to do it the other time. No, yeah. That's part of what scares me about underground. Even when you check it out. It's no different than that. Get out of here. Yeah, it does not it does not have to be like this if it's above the line. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's right. It's there. Right. Yeah, right. No, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And this was really fun. We had a professor who waited out for his phone. And he did get relaxed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ten minutes. Just for a waste. Uh, yeah. Have you ever tried to show up? Yeah. Let's do it. Have you used it? Is it a fairly easy thing to do? What kind of a tool do you think? It's not. It's not. It's not. With. I can sharpen the conventional drill bit, you know, so no problem. But a maple, maple bit is really hard. It, it's, for me, it is beyond the challenge I want to yeah. take on. Interesting. Do you think, are there any people yeah. that sort of make it? They should. To a, I know. <laughs> wow, there's a business. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we can talk to the manufacturers for sure if you bring, bring yeah, back the drill bit. Well, then they, they want to sell you more drill bits. So. Yeah, well, I, there's somebody a, outside of the main. Yeah, room. there's a guy. I've got a guy yeah. in Walkit who who, is, who does sharpening services, yeah. and I should talk to him about yeah, it. But if he doesn't know, he should he he could take that bit and he would know how to sharpen yeah. it. Yep. Yeah. Well, then that's what I'll do. I I'll would talk try to that. him about yeah, it. Certainly. And just see if he can. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I hate to throw stuff out. I use a stainless steel spout, and I just yep. boil them every 